A lot of designers make the mistake of treating XR just like another 2D app, and this is exactly what we want to avoid. The thing is, XR for the sake of XR usually turns out lame. Building a typical 2D app in XR doesn't necessarily add real value. You can just have it on the phone then. The true potential of XR is far greater than that, but only if it's done right. Now, imagine you're stepping into a virtual world that feels so real, you forget you're even wearing a headset. The outside world fades away, is completely irrelevant, and you mind and body focus only on what's in front of you. In this video, I will break down how to make XR experiences that feel that real. I'm Anna, and I've been working in both UX and XR for the last several years. Our team at Immersive Insiders works with XR companies like Meta, and enterprise partners like Puma, Cupra, and Zalando, who already work with XR, and we connect them with our XR community. But without further ado, let's break down what immersion and presence actually is. Tactical immersion describes how well the experience stimulates your senses, so primarily sight, hearing, and touch, but also um, taste and smell. Exactly. <laughs> Emotional immersion draws you in through story and context, so you're not just watching a story unfold, you're emotionally invested in it. Peter, the world's biggest NGO for animal rights, wanted to change their communication from in your face to face to face. Oh God. Uh, whew. Hello. <laughs> through a unique experiment that combined virtual reality with live acting. Is du Tiere? Was gut. We put real emotions into a high-tech medium. Nicht schlecht, der war gut, ey. Making people rethink the way they treat animals. Then we have cognitive immersion, which happens when tasks fully absorb your focus. For example, games like chess, where every move requires lots of thinking and strategy. The level of immersion also depends on the medium. AR is the least immersive, because you still need to be aware of your surroundings. VR blocks out the physical space completely, and it's fully immersive, especially when you add real-time interactions with other people within the virtual space. MR is somewhere between those two, because it blends virtual virtual and real worlds. Now, presence is where things get really interesting. It's not just about being immersed, it's about feeling physically present, feeling like you're genuinely part of this world. It kicks in when you shift from being a passive observer to an active participant. You're not thinking, oh man, this is such a cool experience, because you're too busy living in it. It happens when the virtual environment feels real, when you can interact with objects and people, and they react in real time to what you're doing. How to create immersion and presence in XR. Immersion only works when your users are being comfortable and motion sickness is a major immersion breaker. Using teleportation instead of continuous movement can help reduce that. And high frame rates above 90 frames per second are important to avoid making your users feel nauseous and disoriented. High quality visuals are a must. Realistic lighting and textures can go a long way in making your XR experience feel real. You can do this perfectly well with low poly assets too. Spatial audio for environmental cues and haptic feedback are also super powerful and can make interactions in XR feel super real. If you don't have any controllers, you can try to include self-tactile feedback like Apple does with their gaze and pinch interaction. By the way, when have you felt completely immersed in XR or what happened that the immersion was broken off suddenly? Let me know in the comments below, I'd love to hear your thoughts. To have an actually immersive experience, users need to interact with the virtual world just like they would with the real one. You can do this by integrating natural movements and gestures. For example, picking up objects or pushing a door to open it rather than pressing a button or interacting with menus all the time. Storytelling, in my opinion, is one of XR's greatest powers and super critical for immersion and presence. Having a strong story throughout your experience that connects with your user on a much more deeper emotional level makes them feel invested in the world you're creating. There are lots and lots of storytelling experiences on the MetaQuest store and I can highly recommend trying out a few of them. Playing a game of table tennis with your friend or collaborating on a project in XR in real time is a game changer for immersion. It can make your users feel so much more engaged and drawn into the experience. Same as in real life and same as with websites and apps, people need to feel like they are in control over what happens. If you let your users freely explore the space and interact with objects on their own terms and let them make their own choices, it strengthens their sense of agency. I would say a certain degree of complexity and challenge can be nice to engage your users, 
but overall too much information and too many tasks at once can just overwhelm them and pull them out of the experience. So try to reduce the cognitive load as much as possible and properly guide the user through the application. A good onboarding is especially important for new users and when you're using interactions like gestures that need to be learned first. All right, let's recap. Immersion is about fully engaging as many senses as possible through natural interactions, high quality visuals, spatial audio, and haptic feedback. Presence is a deeper psychological state that lets you feel like you're actually inside the virtual world. Realistic lighting, storytelling, minimizing discomfort, and natural, smooth interactions can help you draw your users into the experience. But quick warning, things like too much complexity, involuntary movement, and low frame rates can break the immersion as quickly as you've established it. Okay, so right now we've already covered what draws people into an experience and what makes them feel present. What I didn't talk about though is how to make XR experiences accessible and inclusive for much more people. Because with a standard XR experience, a lot of people can't even access it, let alone be immersed in it. In my video next week, I will have a look at the current state of accessibility in XR and what we can do to make XR more inclusive for everyone. See you soon.